one that went back up to Oak Street here. Is there any questions about that before I move on to uh, a more weedy slide? Yes, sir. What happens to the parking for the businesses that are in the square area? Is that, is that the area in front of the mud house? And, um, yeah. <coughs> exactly. And so, so I'll be walking mud house from the Okay, okay. you're going to get Okay. <laughs> 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 can't imagine they're happy. <laughs> they're okay. They're really good. They good. Good. Yeah. a couple of months ago. Right. And they're in a pretty good place. Good, good. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the goals of the project, um, I think there is this one more, maybe there we go. Um, to complete Oak Street. So right now, Oak Street was sort of stubbed out just by the library here, and then it turns into a gravel area that works somewhat like a road. So th that'll be um, a completed road network with uh, on street parking, um, stormwater drainage, et cetera. That's one uh, thing that uh, we can do to connect to the improvements uh, in the square proper. Also, right now, you know what the parking situation is like out there. Um, it's unstructured, um, ungraded. Sometimes the pavement's a little rough. Um, potholes and utilities. And so uh, we want to make sure that we get not just better parking, but more parking that's available for businesses downtown and visitors um, to the community. Um, pedestrian safety, there's just a handful of sidewalks, not a lot of uh, safe connectivity. Uh, so that was one of the major priorities for the project. Um, right now, traffic flow is what people make it. Uh, it will be actually both Oak Street and the Square uh, will be accepted into the VDOT system. There will be public roads, and so they will be um, designed and built to those standards. Um, I'm totally blocked. No, I'm not. You, you go right ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so traffic flow enhancements. Right now, it's a, a little bit, um, well, unguided, shall we say. Uh, also, ADA accessibility, uh, there's no structured parking spaces, so there's no, no designated, designated ADA compliant um, parking spaces, and I'll show you uh, where theirs are gonna go and what they're gonna look like. Um, also, there's some stormwater management issues and a hard rain. Uh, we've uh, heard from some of the, the business owners about water getting into their basements, um, or at least one. Um, so um, all, all of this will have new curb and gutter um, and drainage systems that, that take the water away from businesses and uh, take them down the roads to a stormwater management facility. I think it's about half a mile that way. Um, and then again, just sort of making sure that this project and the Barnes Lumber project, which meet, uh, are, the, the designs are aligned with each other. Thank you, Allison. So again, here's where we are. That's the solar array I was bragging about not too long ago. That's my first uh, project in the Elmo County. Uh, so we are completing this network. There will be structured parking on the, I guess that's the east side, and then we'll improve this entrance into what is an alleyway there. And you can see a couple of ADA parking spaces that will primarily serve uh, the future plaza and, and adjacent roads. But there'll be a safe um, crossing across to uh, sidewalks here. You can see um, actual structured parking um, toward the top and the bottom. Um, and I'm gonna, the next slide's going to zoom into this area a little bit, but I'll just note the portion in yellow right now, uh, right there is where the, the uh, gate comes, or the fence line comes out for railroad access, one, one of the um, challenges that held this project up was negotiating with um, the Department of Rail and Public Transportation, which now owns that railroad, just to get them to pay attention to let us move that over so that we pick up more parking that's on the fringe of the businesses and, and have an easier access point for, for the railroad to be able to drive up Oak Street and then access their property. So we finally uh, got that paperwork for the transfer of property signed about a month ago, uh, and so we're we're um, moving at a high high rate of speed after a long time. So that this says 52 parking spaces actually was corrected. It's 54 parking spaces that we're we're getting. Yes. How many parking spaces are there now? 
I think it's like 40, but they're, you know, they're, they're kind of, since they're unstructured, it just depends on where people park. And then a lot, there's a lot of parking uh, in this area that's not impacted, so I'm not sure if that's counted towards the total. But, um, but it's, it's an increase in number and an improvement in accessibility um, for ADA compliance. Yes, ma'am. Will there be any improvement to the traffic coming off the Jarman Gap Road with Tabor Street there? That, that intersection is really bad a lot of time. And then you're putting more traffic in that park that's going to go through that intersection with Jarman Gap meeting up with Tabor there, right by the Methodist Church. Um, I have seen some near accident. Crozet is very fortunate. We have not had any bad, bad accidents, but it's probably coming down the road. People, I, I'm, I'm scared. I don't go out certain times of the day because of the high traffic in those uh, intersections. It's really serious in my book. Well, the specific project is pretty much what you're seeing in here. Um, and I'll just, and one of the reasons I explained what our department does earlier is to sort of describe the limits of what we do. So, the, you know, we, we have a planning department um, within the community development department. Um, the planning director works with the board of supervisors to determine, you know, the needs and priorities of the community. They um, ha try to have their eye on, um, you know, growth and conflicts and if there's uh, extra demand of people coming down here, you know, what that impact might be. So I can't really speak to what else may be in the plans. Um, my department constructs what's been determined and approved by the board. <coughs> Kevin McDermott will, I'm sure, again, yes. come back and talk about the same things that he's talked about annually about all the various intersections that are being evaluated. Any other questions while I'm paused? Before we go into the, okay, next slide please. So this is just a focus on this um, area. And, and then um, the, the yellow spaces are new, you know, basically ramps slash walkways. Uh, not highlighted is that some sections of the sidewalk will be replaced. Some of it's relatively new, others is old. Um, but there will be um, sidewalk improvements all around. So you can just see that kind of the, the uh, <coughs> um, entrances highlighted in yellow. But this is a key feature here. Um, so right now you can go, you can turn in from either direction, you can leave in either direction. <coughs> um, and now it will be a right turn in, heading north. Um, and then if you leave, you have to head north. So if you want to head south, you're going to have to go back down Oak Street and over to Library Avenue and make a left. Um, so this was, yes sir? Um, so that means you can't take a left to the light anymore. That's correct. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to say I hate that because many times I will go all the way over there because you can't get out of Library Avenue turning left and be able to take a protected left with a light. And you know, it's, this is a tough intersection either way because it's at the top of the hill. Um, and so trying to look left or right is difficult in terms of sight lines, unless you're turning on a protected tree. But this was a VDOT requirement, um, not a design decision. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier that this is not going to be a public road. And so it's got to live by public road guidelines. And what their concern was is that as is, because it's a it can be a difficult turn with a lot of wait, um, wait times, particularly if you're turning south, down, down this direction, um, that it would basically back up and back up the road and cause congestion as far back as Oak Street. So um, this was one that um, our engineering firm worked very closely with VDOT to try to resolve, and this is where VDOT landed. And because VDOT is co-funding this project, and because we want this to be an accepted public road, um, this was um, the design direction. Yes, sir. Will the traffic light then be removed from that intersection? No, but it will be modified so that it, you know, will have a, a left turn to the And is there mostly for pedestrian crossing spaces? So, uh, 
Well, it's, uh, the, from what I understand, I was in the room when these discussions were happening, but it was really the, the you know, congestion of the t uh, within the square on, on, the, um, on the new road that was driving that. There is an island there that's being put in that's, that doesn't exist now, so what they call a refuge area, so that you can cross here and then have a chance to, a safe place to look down the hill to be able to continue to cross over underneath the bridge. Um, can you put a bollard in front of the place where you push the button to cross Crozet Avenue so people stop knocking it down? Uh, okay. um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. Uh, this, um, this design is so, you know, images and so detailed that it shows every feature. But, um, I will ask that question. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Um, the grade of the parking in front of the square, or at the square, is that going to change so it flat, or are you still dealing with the, kind of the incline? From one side of the road to the other. I think there'll still be a little bit of an incline. The water's going to drain from the uh, well, from, from this this way down. Uh, that's generally the slope of the land, so there'll be some kind of So uh, this is the first of three slides, sort of showing the the broader area and the intent of it. You can see the hash mark section over here. The plan is to um, do that part of the construction first as a first phase. And so um, that will allow you know, parking to, to maintain to serve the businesses and pedestrian access to be safe while we complete that. Um, and you'll see, I'm not going to walk through the narrow signs, but there's traffic you know, detours to avoid construction that will be put in place. I did not bring any of the slides from a prior presentation on um, how they'll do the um, pedestrian flow, but there will be, you know, and for each phase, there'll be plans in place as well to uh, direct pedestrians on a safe path so there's no conflicts with vehicles. So, thank you for the next one. Um, so, the second phase will have the Oak Street open. We'll do um, this entrance. This will be shut down for that, for that phase of construction. We are going to be doing some improvements to the alleyway uh, as well, just so that it meets standards and also for, because. Water's going to be flowing that way. We need to make sure that we manage the, the, the storm water from the rain in a productive way. So we will have um, this sort of gap um, that we're working on where people can park and people can park there. So we still retain pretty close to the existing number of informal parking spaces and pedestrian access to the businesses. And the next slide um, just shows the you know, the, the last phase of the project. So we'll, uh, you'll be able to turn right in here, leave through the alley while that is being constructed and finished. And of course, there'll be uh, pedestrian access through this alley and not from, um, from the completed Oak Street. That's my last design related slide. So if anybody has any questions that I can't answer, then now's a great time to ask them. Any questions that I can answer are appreciated too. Yes, sir. I don't know if it falls in the category, but uh, and maybe you'll talk about this on another slide, how pedestrians during this phase would access the drugstore, car downers. I assume that would be, access would be maintained even while you're building the third phase? Access is maintained. There's actually five phases, and the, the final one is to replace the mm -hmm. older sections of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So um, there'll be that, that little period where um, that access will have to be managed kind of so we're, the plan for that phase, that for the concrete work should be pretty fast, and it will be um, weekend work mostly. Okay. Ken, you're an architect. You've got questions. I hesitate to bring this up. The Christmas tree. The um, the Christmas tree is going away. But there's a anticipation that it might be replaced in the in the new plaza. Not with the same Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 it's a Christmas tree. A year around Christmas. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And, this question. and everything to the right is a different project. Correct. Okay. Understood. Okay, next slide. 
So here's the project schedule, and, and I'll tell you, there's breaking a little bit of news today. Um, we had intended to bid this project together with the Barnes Lumber Project that's off to the other side. Um, but we got that break that I mentioned with finally getting our last property um, acquired. Uh, we're just entering that phase for the Barnes Lumber Project, and um, so that will take a while. We were planning to bid them together so that they were you know, coordinated and potentially have realized some savings um, with the project, but we think you know, delaying this project for a year or more to align with the other project probably cost us more money, and then the whole area would be a construction zone, so it would take away some of our options to have, you know, maintain access and have a, a safe area. So, um, and you may be hearing this for the first time. I uh, know she's been tracking these projects closely, uh, but it was a recommendation we made to uh, the county executive's office, and they agreed. So, um, in a minute, I'll be well. No, I'm showing you the schedule now. So, the project schedule is that we're moving. So, we're um, planning. Uh, we're, we're completing. There's literally just a little bit of paperwork left on the on the last property to get processed and recorded, so that it becomes our property. Uh, and then we will be. Um, in March of this year, late March, most likely, advertising bids. Um, so that'll be open to um, uh, civil construction contractors primarily with, with other subcontractors lined up. We're hoping for, for good bids, obviously. It's a $2 million project, just to give you a sense of, of the scale. Um, this, that market has been really tight um, for a couple of months since the pandemic began with supply chain issues and labor uh, increases and fuel was crazy for a while um, and supply chain issues were a challenge. Things seem to be settling down so we are very hopeful um, that we'll get a good set of bids. We've been updating our estimates um, on a very regular basis to try to make this, this target. Um, so that's a couple of month process um, before you get your bids in. So uh, we'll find out in May. Um, that we're hope hopefully we'll find out that we're good to go, and then we move towards executing the contract um, with the contractor. <laughs> Since BDOT is funding this, there's a couple of steps in there where they review the bid documents and they review the bids to make sure that they're compliant with the with the specifications because eventually they have to accept the road. So you know everything's got to be um, good with them, um, and then we'll move. Um, Pretty quickly to construction start. That'll be you know mobilizing initially, so it won't necessarily be um, a lot of big trucks out there on day one tearing things up, uh, and they'll have to get barricades and signs up for the traffic management side of things. But it's going to be should be a pretty fast project. We think it's about an 11 month project. Um, so that puts us into um, next summer before we hope that we are done and out and the pavement's marked. Um, and we're kind of living with um, what we built. Um, so this has been uh, a long time coming. I don't know, it's been six years, seven years since this project was first funded. Um, mm -hmm. So we are very happy to be here and be working on this one. First big, heavy breath. Melissa said a team years that it took us before 2010 to get control of that. The quick lane. So it's been a, all of you have been very, very, very patient, and so I'm really excited that we're going to start making the mess here so we get better. Yeah. Um, and I think that's my last slide of any substance. So um, I think I've got one slide that just says discussion. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, discussion. Um, so I will step back a little bit and just. Of course, answer any questions that I can help answer, but otherwise leave it to the room to um, take the conversation where you will. I have a question. This is really a dumb question. I'm sure you all have thought about this already, but because I often stand in front of Mud House there waiting for people to get together to bike and watch the trucks as they try to make it under the bridge and maybe not. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if you could only turn right out of the square, if you're in a truck, and then you say, like, oh, I'm not going to make it under that bridge. That's too late to know that, right? You need, like, a sign way back here that says if you're bigger than whatever, 
don't go this way. Good question. Or good point. Yeah, and I don't know the answer to that, so I'm going to take that one back. Um, no, I, I think most of the trucks will probably be coming up the, the alley and the sign. Uh, yeah. The trucks right turn only kind of thing. But you know, there's not a lot but, of space for trucks to back mm -hmm. up and maneuver if they like all of a sudden can't go that way. Yeah. It's just, it's really kind of entertaining to stand there for a few hours and watch the trucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's at 250 on the quarters going into Crozet have the dimensions um, to stay. Oh. I've seen the dimension sign out there, but I thought there was on all the corridors going into Crozet. Don't try to, um, you, you, you have limited height restriction. Well, i got to tell you, they don't all read it. That's, yeah. well, that, that's their problem then. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, if I were a trucker, I would want to know where I was going. You know, mm -hmm. what, the, what obstacles I would be running into. I used to be a trucker, and I had a guy on our, our crew who went out and hit a low bridge, brought the truck back after he went through the police, went back out in a bigger truck, hit the same bridge. <laughs> that <laughs> afternoon, it was the same high truck. <laughs> did you keep him employed? No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, in my case so, in so, point. So truckers don't catch on quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to recognize that that's obviously a critical intersection. Got the volunteer stations on the other side of it. And anything happens yeah. on this side, they've got a long trip to take mm -hmm. to try to help you. So um, I will definitely make a note of that good point and make sure we cover everything that we can. Uh, gotcha. Do you know if the contracts will have incentives for early completion? Mm -hmm. not. Will they have penalties for late completion? We, we put in all of our contracts. Um, language that calls for liquidity damages um, for delays if they're if they're undue delays. So there there are reasons why we would allow for some delays. Um, so weather can be um, you know depending on that can be a significant delay. Um, occasionally on some sorts of projects where we have to do a lot of digging, and this will have some digging because of the stormwater element. We may hit rock. Um, we, we did a, a project on Ivy Road, putting in so sidewalks last year, and that was delayed six months uh, because we hit a, a vein of very hard rock that was about 100 yards long. So that kind of thing can happen, and we would not um, entertain asking for liquidity damage in a situation like that. But what will not happen again is when the streetscape one was started, and the guy did not have a completion deadline. And he went away. Tim's not, he remembers. <laughs> he went away for six months and left this five by five by five foot deep hole in the middle of the four And just poof, went to work on some other job where he did have a completion thing. So, mm -hmm. I, that was, mm -hmm. I began to make a scene about I'm sure those contracts were held down. And I'm sure you will. So, they can't do that. And they don't tell Yes, sir. So I remember reading, I think it was in Philadelphia, there was a major bridge construction project and they put a webcam up so that people could see the work being done in real time and appreciate the effort that was going into it. Is that something we might consider here, giving residents a chance to, to watch the, uh, the progress of the construction in real time or would that create privacy issues? I don't know. I mean, we, I'll, I'll take it back. That's interesting. I mean, we, we looked at, um, for our project downtown for the new uh, General's Court building, we're doing still photos, not a live video feed for that, but in, in supplementing that with um, some um, droid um, like overhead photos to show the progress, but we're not doing live data. But that's a, it's an idea. We'll look at that. I'm not sure the privacy question is a good one. I think there was, um, there was at least um, time lapse or stills on the diverging diamond. Mm -hmm. I think I, and that was cool to scroll through and see everything. Mm -hmm. See that progress of the answer. It gives people a sense of yeah, the movement and what's going on. Um, okay, well thank you, Rose Lance. It's very exciting. I have one more question. Okay. Lance, if you can you talk a little bit about the extent of communication you've had with property owners or um, the people who are actively 
operating business is on the square. Sure, it's been a couple of months. Uh, Ms. Mallet came to the meeting actually with the uh, property owners slash business owners. We did a, a, an invitation. Uh, this PowerPoint I'm showing today is based pretty much on what we did, but it had quite a bit more detail. We also had our entire project management team and the engineering team there to help answer questions. Um, I wasn't at that meeting, but I understand that they were pretty satisfied. And Ms. Mallet, you can correct me if that's wrong. Answers to all their questions. They certainly raised their concerns and were able to get those put into the process. So, good. Sorry, Lance, I have one really small question here. On this picture, on the lower right, so but this parking, this informal parking area down here, mm -hmm. right, this kind of dirt gravel has been really important. A lot of people have been using that, right, to come downtown or to Piedmont Place, whatever. Is there a gap right there? Will people still be able to access? That, because it looks like this is all curved yeah. off, right? So this is all off yeah, limits. I, I think we are leaving that bit open. Well, maybe, I think, well, it's obviously left open. And I think that was in part for future construction activities. Okay. Um, we would be able to still access it by going up to the end of Oak Street and turning right. That will all be yeah. open until the um, part of Thunder Project. Okay. This includes your first slide. I thought showed hilltop connecting or um, hilltop, but um, high street connecting. Is um, that, that's not part of this. Could you go back to that big graphic? Thank you. This is doing all kinds of things. <laughs> 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 Wait, I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, the the, 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 the whole the big. It was like the first one. Ah, yes, okay. It was like the first one. Yeah. So, yeah, high again, this, this orange is the bounds of this project. So, um, when we start the uh, barn slumber project, um, we'll complete this connection here. Um, to High Street, there will be a roundabout there. Um, Lyra Avenue will be extended, it will make this turn, and then we're going all the way out. Um, and that's the portion that you're doing um, in partnership of some sort with VDOT and the developer? Correct. Okay. And the developer's crazy in the Tower Associates, mm -hmm. I should acknowledge that. Yes, sir. So back to the difficulty turning left without a traffic light because of traffic on Crozet Avenue. Is any of this foreseeing with VDOT a traffic light at the end of Library Avenue with Crozet Avenue? Um, I love that. Here? Uh, uh, no, uh, yes, yes, there. Yeah. 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 Be because it is going to be impossible to turn left to go south on Crozet Avenue. And that's the direction many people want to go. Mm -hmm. Not I'll right. I will check with our And once you turn yeah. right and you're under the railroad, mm -hmm. you're if you wanted to go south, you're just stuck. You gotta go find a parking lot, turn around, come back, and then yeah. <laughs> I'll check with our planning department. Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I think if VDOT models the traffic flows, they're gonna see serious issues with people good. coming from everything that's there and wanting to go south and backing up and just getting stuck because they can't get out. Do you think it's bad backing up when there's a traffic light there? Imagine when there's mm -hmm. nothing. It's going to get bad. Mm -hmm. I think it's been discussed off and on over many years about moving. It was originally moving the light from the square to Library Avenue and then they mm -hmm. said they wanted to have some pedestrian crossing control, which could be just a walk light to take it over to the English Meadow side for the people who would need to cross mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just have to keep pushing away on that. Okay. Yeah. And there's some information in the master plan about that, some ideas that the planning mm -hmm. department and others had as part of the big traffic study we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll just stay and listen to the rest of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The only thing people might not realize is that the rescue squad is going to move, is going to build a new building, 
near the, the exit of Library Avenue so that they're already on this side of that inter the intersection with the square. That's a couple of meters off the road, but it's still in the works. Uh, all right, that brings us to agenda item four, which is our uh, updates from Ms. Uh, Malik. I don't know if Lonnie's not here, but. Lonnie is not so here, and now. he asked me to be sure to mention that uh, uh, in a couple of days, the recording for the Planning Commission from this past Tuesday will be available, and people can listen to it. It was a really thorough discussion on many different things, talking about the latest chapter development area, land use and transportation chapter as part of the comprehensive plan. At the end of the month, there will be a Planning Commission discussion of the rural area of transportation and land use, or land use and transportation. And there's all sorts of goals and objectives and things that I hope that all of you will look at and give your um, feedback on because it, these are all things that we really need to do better about. Several of the really interesting com uh, comments from planning commissioners that I thought touched on a lot of concerns for the Crozet development area is how one asked, so how are the things in this long list of projects prioritized and how do we, if the, if the planning commission is going to support something in the master plan, there needs to be a plan laid out for how it moves to the CIP. Uh, because what everyone is very frustrated by is that things have been on the list, and they were on the list for 20 years, and now people are completely done with the trust that things are actually going to happen. So I think these are really good points that, that they brought out, and I think that they will be addressed as the master plan goes forward, for the, I mean, the uh, comp plan goes forward. And uh, another talked about the importance of having priorities to carry out to maintain the quality of life of the people in who live here. So I, I was pleased that they were perhaps not talking about Crozet specific, but really addressed many of the issues that I think are very important to people out here. Uh, several commented about how this is the only growth area that isn't already adjacent to something else, and some people who are here have fewer options to get somewhere than um, those in the urban ring where they can have different choices of ways to go. But I do encourage all of you to continue weighing in on the comprehensive plan. It's really starting to hit its stride now as far as having concrete things to read and look at, and um, I think we'll be Heading for adoption, I think Allison will correct me if I'm not right on this, by the end of 2024 is the adoption date that is planned. So sooner the later, sooner is always better than later as far as getting your comments in on all those things. And I know we've been hearing a lot about different uh, applications coming forward, and so that will continue, I'm sure. And I appreciate all of the comments that the people have sent in advance. And that's all I really have right now. Right. And just a little question on the the adoption announcing to on the timeline. Um, you said the adoption, so the master plan adoption by the end of the year is the, the comprehensive plan. Sorry, the comprehensive. The right. It's supposed to be done. So the I mean, because we're still last we heard, you know, we're still at this fairly high level, right? Of, of mm -hmm. there were goals and, and objectives. Right. So we anticipate having like draft language and the comment would be right. over the summer roughly, is that? Well, I think there's quite a bit of draft language for these two chapters right now that one can react to. So I think it's coming, the details are now coming. Okay. And um, every month there will be new details available that people okay. can read. All right. Yeah, the yeah, there's um, the, there, there are new, or updated feedback forms open for the, um, what Ian had mentioned earlier, the um, rural area and the development area. And I think this, is this community facilities one new to, um, um, but they're on the main page of engage.albrow.org. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find the timeline um, update. I'm not, 100% familiar with if anything has changed, but I know. Um, Can you see that? 
main and I'll always yeah, to yeah. make sure we look at the latest and we can include our feedback. Um, and two quick other questions. One, I saw there was a, a report or the, the story just yesterday in the progress about the new park and ride facility. Um, so you had comments there. I think there, I heard, I saw some comments online, people discussing. Um, I just want to clarify that that project, that's, that's paid for, that was a state and money. So that's not uh, our money, that's not county money that was sort of paying for that. I think some people were saying, you know, why did we choose to build that as opposed to build sidewalks or build other stuff? Right. So, so this comes out of a funding bucket for regional transit transportation. And the work on this has gone back about seven years. Uh, it was a joint effort with the planning district in our side of the mountain and Shenandoah, the stand by Augusta Waysboro uh, planning district over the mountain. Because, as you all are well aware, whenever there's an accident on 64, you find out how many people are coming over the mountain to go to work on our side of the mountain because they all get off and come right through town to, uh, to go on 250 instead if they slow down. So the goal was to apply for some of this um, transit money. And in order to qualify for rural, for federal operations support, the site had to be in the rural area, as opposed because those are rural federal funds that are used mm -hmm. for this. Um, so that would contribute to the success of the actual bus that's going back and forth. Some of you may have written the Afton Express already. Um, it is, has significant ridership, and to the extent that they're actually adding another route a little later in the morning and, and also later in the afternoon to go home. So. The location there was for the stipulation of the funding and that it could be done in the right of way and have easy access to 64 so that the bus over the mountain could hop off. It will have to be determined, I mean, I, there's no absolute prediction about how it will help, but I've been in lots of um, settings where they have drop off for, you know, the kiss and ride in Falls Church and places like that where there's no parking really, it's just you zoom around and the person jumps out and gets on the trolley or the bus. So this, the goal for this is to make it much more convenient um, for people to actually ride the bus. And some of the difficulty that was found by people wanting to ride the Crozet Connect was its route around Crozet was pretty limited. Limited to the places where they could stop legitimately and, and uh, pick up people. So it is perhaps with a circulator to take people through the neighborhoods to the parking rides. All sorts of things are possible, but nothing is written in stone yet, except that we do have the funding to get this constructed. But it is not taking away money from the sidewalks and other priorities that the county is funding. And do you have any idea how many people ride the Crozet Connector bus? Or is that, that? I don't, unfortunately. But it was almost full every day, basically, was the, what they had reported. It was during the summer, the third of fall, that I heard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to mention uh, in terms of uh, the board is, of course, next week, the 21st, is Montclair mm -hmm. will be before the Board of Supervisors. It's something that we talked about in multiple yeah. meetings, um, we talked about it before, so those who are interested, get comments in, and yeah. we can, of course, email the board, you and the other board members directly to share comments or yeah. sign up to speak. Any business, Allison? We'll talk to us about. So, um, if you guys haven't seen um, already, I think a couple of you have taken some of them. I think you took um, all the ones we've out so far. We have the training videos out. So instead of um, actually, I don't, I'm not sure because of COVID when um, some of you joined, what training process happened? Um, there used to be. Pre-COVID, used to be in-person. Um, I think they did a uh, kind of around when the appointments were, because um, the CACs had like a very strict appointment schedule, and so they would hold, hold I think, like two or three meetings a year with all the new members and kind of go over FOIA and how 
meetings work and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's, um, uh, we've, we've moved to some video training now. And so they're up on YouTube. Anyone can watch them. Um, they will stay up on YouTube and we'll add them to YouTube going forward too so anyone can watch them. But um, we are going to switch to a um, format where we can basically see if members have watched them or not. Um, so you'll get a login and we'll send more information out about that. But if you have watched them in the meantime or you watched them in the meantime, I think in um, a recent email um, there was a form that you can fill out. It's like, a, it's like a Microsoft form, whatever, that you've said which ones you've watched. Um, there's three out now, um, and uh, the all CAC transportation is on the list as well. Um, if you go on the county's YouTube account um, as well, there is a um, list of them. It says the, uh, if you go to playlist, it says the Let's Talk Alabama Learning Series, and you can click um, the view full playlist, and they will all pop up on the side. Yeah, there's four of right now, and technically three of them are like the training videos, and then one is from the all CAC meeting. Um, so we'll be adding to those um, every month or every other month, um, and then like I said too, there'll be more information about signing up for a, um, it's actually what like, the county uses for the finance training videos, but to sign up for that so um, we can see if members have watched it, but they're open for anybody to watch on the county's YouTube channel. Um, so look for more information about that, and if you watch it um, ahead of time in another email, um, or in the January kind of CAC email, there was um, a link to the form. There'll be one in February too, and then we'll have more information soon about the other site to do it. Um, if you've already done it there on the, through the YouTube and the form, the Microsoft form, you don't need to redo it when we do the finance training platform. So if you want to wait for that to open, you're more than welcome to, but they are up now. Um, board vacancies and appointments. Um, there are quite a few vacancies actively currently on this committee. There are um, at least three of you who are um, uh, 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 about to term off potentially, and then there are three or more potentially of you who um, could apply for another term. Um, if you would like to serve on the committee still, you um, should apply. Um, <laughs> I think you should have gotten an email from um, the clerk's office about that. Um, uh, like I said, there are other vacancies as well. Um, so tell your friends, neighbors, prosations, business owners, any of you are more than welcome to um, uh, uh, apply. And um, if you go to the county website, um, there is, you get to albemarle.org, and you um, uh, hover over community, there is, if you click get engaged in local government, there's a bunch of information on that. Um, there's a serve on the board or on a board or committee page, and you can check out the list and visit the application page to apply. Um, and so this shows kind of all of them, and then off to the side too, there's um, the application. Um, and you can see who go to, I'm not sure why this page just has the rosters, but if you click official rosters, you can see like all the vacancies as well. Um, and all the committees in the description, and if you click on them, they see the vacancies. Um, then the other part of that is, um, apparently this was um, always um, how this worked, but um, it was m more spelled out in the board policies this last year, um, which is if you are on a committee currently and you um, either term off or do not reapply once your term is up, um, you can technically stay on um, as a member until your seat is filled. Yeah. So in Crozet in particular, there are um, four current vacancies, and there are, like I said, I think two or three of you who um, that would apply to. Um, and even if you even if you don't term off, if you have an eligible term and you don't reapply for that eligible term, you technically still like stay on. Like you're on the list. If you open the board agendas where the boards and vacancies are listed, there's like a fun chart. And people's names stay on there for a long time because technically you are eligible to be attending meetings still, and you are eligible to like reapply um, for your seat. And until you tell, in your all's case, me for this committee or whoever your staff liaison is, um, and or the clerk's office, and we would relay it to the clerk. Until you tell us you are no longer interested, you will stay on that list as long as you are eligible um, to serve um, longer. Um, but I will say to you that it also applies to people who are potentially like, terming off. So if you would like to stay on, and I mean, 
you're also more than welcome to reapply. Um, it's up to the board whether or not to reappoint you, even if you have technically um, uh, served your terms. Um, so I'm going to use you as an example, Joe. Joe, you are more than welcome um, to reapply. The board will make a decision on whether or not um, you will be a member. But it, it, no matter that, until your term or until your slot is filled, you can keep coming to meetings. You actually don't count towards quorum, though, which is fascinating. And you're obviously welcome to like come to meetings in general. Um, but it doesn't count towards quorum, um, which is um, a little confusing part of it. But you, um, essentially, until they fill your slot, you are more than welcome to be on um, the committee. And if you do not want to do that, um, you should send me an email. <laughs> um, so I know, and I can tell um, the clerk's office that um, you are you are not interested in continuing on in any capacity. Um, I had always personally wondered why there were so many people who kind of stay on that list for a long time. If you open, there's like a little spreadsheet, um, and this is why. Um, and this has always been a practice, but it wasn't totally spelled out in the board policies until this year. Um, and so we've met with the clerk's office to clarify this, so we can tell everybody um, this is how it works. So um, it, it's usually like not a, um, something that gets discussed because usually there's people who are filling these seats anyway. Um, but we have um, uh, a number of vacancies currently. We will have potentially a few more depending on um, what many of you here decide to do um, and uh, many committee members who are not here decide to do. and. Um, we have another number of vacancies on some of the other committees as well that are um, experiencing this that will also give this explanation. So um, it's a little confusing. Um, <laughs> so if you do have like other follow-up questions, feel free to send me an email, um, and I can try to get an answer from the clerk's office. And if there's anything I said that like contradicted each other, feel free to let me know. But if you have any questions, <laughs> um, most importantly, is you look at the, the numbers. We have more vacancies now. Many of us are supposed to be leaving, right? So um, the bottom line is we need more people to apply, we need yes. people to, yes. to join, right? So um, that's the key thing, right? We need to make sure we're getting people, and and you know, and I appreciate it very much the, the the opportunity and the invitation to continue to meet. But frankly, too, we need new blood, right? We need new people. We need people with new perspectives and different perspectives and experience and people who haven't been in the street all the time, right? I think that's that's an important thing. You can't just keep having the same people in the same thing over and over. And that's critical that we get new people uh, and more people so you build that behind for everybody. So, you know, everybody around the table, everybody not around the table, um, we need people to join, right? And remember, you know, so get your friends, there's that apply button right there. That's all it takes. <laughs> and there's a short little application process. Doesn't cost anything. <laughs> no, I'm confused. You're here anyway. You might as well sit at the table instead of in the chair. Yeah. Forum, it seems like if if we don't have people allowed to continue on until, like us, as I said, don't even think about going away until we found a replacement for you. So at least not here though. But um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you're on the list but just not present, then that would impact quorum, but if you're, I, I guess I've never heard that if you we were still an extension that you didn't count to be, because we can't, we won't get any business on at all if that's the case. Yeah, that's well, so, so technically there would just be, yeah, you would need everybody who was officially a member to be there and, and going. Um, like, a, I will say that I guess tonight, do, is there quorum? Um, I will say to you, it, the only thing that gets fully voted on regularly is minutes. Right. So we just kind of push them. I, I'll use Fifth and Avon as an example. I don't seem to be bashing them or anything, but there have been a lot of meetings this last year where we did not have quorum. Um, and typically on that committee in particular, um, there's a couple people who travel for business a lot, so they'll let us know ahead of time. Um, but we have um, had a lot of issues with that. But they've always had either a community meeting for development or kind of a discussion like this where um, it doesn't hurt to go on. You just can't approve your minutes. Um, 
but um, or with the community meeting, you really kind of have to do it then. They've done the advertisements, and t typically there's people in the audience who are there to hear that, and we don't need to delay that. Um, and if we had delayed it, we would um, have many, many long meetings, with many community meetings for those areas. Um, but um, so it's not like a, a huge, huge problem. Obviously, it's not a great thing to have, um, and especially like if there isn't something that is. Um, a scheduled presentation or a scheduled discussion or a community meeting for a development project, um, it's almost like a, a little bit of a why are we there um, when you don't have a quorum. But um, uh, so obviously it is ideal to have a quorum and it's ideal to have a, a full committee, but um, there is this continuation and then they don't count towards the quorum. So, and the, the other issue here too is there are a few people who are, um, terms are expiring soon. I think the other three. Um, who could reapply, um, and if you're interested, obviously, I would encourage you to reapply, um, but um, then there still are the three plus four current things, so seven spots that are. Um, so our numbers are officially reduced from 15 or 16, whatever it is, to however many active members we have. And then based, that's the majority. Yes, the yes, so it's the majority so of that. It could be that. Four, basically. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, so it could be, um, if, if there are only like, I don't, I don't I'm not great at math, and especially not off the cuff, but say there's there's four members, if three of them are there, you have a quorum, any yeah. meeting technically anyway. So um, it's where you get to, yeah, when you have few numbers, which is also a little bit of the Avon's problem, is they have, they also have four vacancies currently. So then you're down, and then you have a few people who are absent, and then quorum, um, isn't huge, but like because you have those absences on top of that, you like are you really need everyone there. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, the smaller the, numbers. Yeah, the, uh, to me, it's it's just less important. I mean, whether we have numbers or quorum minutes, and to me, the more important thing is get people involved, right? And yeah. just get more people attracting people. So we gotta, and I think it's incumbent on all of us. I'm, I'm as bad as anyone. I haven't done a good enough job. I think we need to be. Asking people and reaching out and spreading this word and getting people joined because it is important. So, uh, take that word. Yeah. Get your friends, get you your push. neighbors, push it. And I did, sorry, I forgot, I did want to ask one quick thing on the board. Um, transportation draft priority list. Yeah. The, we saw that over, I think, the summer. Kevin presented that draft with all the priorities and everybody yeah. and I freaked out because it was kind of a mess. He said the, the expectation was that it'd be coming back end of 2023 or sometime early 2024, do you know? They did things? go over the projects which are in the smart scale application. That was the main focus of this meeting two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So um, that information is there in the, in the board agenda. And I think it was sent out to somebody who had asked for it. Uh, I can certainly, if anybody needs it particularly, let me know and I will dig it up and email it to you. But it, that is for the, the State funding, which comes open in various categories every other year. So yeah. there are a whole series of deadlines for that. And uh, some of the important projects for this area are on that list. But the, the whole draft priority list, that whole 100 well, something project yeah. list. And that was a work in progress, just sort of a, a thought okay. starter, as opposed to something that was adopted with that organization. Yeah. Um, so is that coming back or is that, that idea is coming I think it's just a work in progress. So oh. you help me out. When you had asked me this, um, one of the times we've spoken in the last couple months, I had asked Kevin and he said that um, they were waiting. So they've got a thing, Director Michael Barnes. Okay. And they were, were kind of orienting him to all of this and looking for his guidance on where to go with that. So um, uh, I have not gotten an update since then, but he said that it was going to be um, a little later than like anticipated originally, right. so. I just want to make sure you're like, <laughs> this is something, yeah. No, yeah, it has not happened. Okay. Um, I will say, I'll add on to that though, too. So quarterly, um, uh, um, it's been just for the last few times, but sometimes it's been Kevin McDermott, and um, I guess it could be anybody on the little transportation planning team in the future, but um, quarterly they do an update to the board on transportation projects overall. Um, and I, I'm actually working on the February um, CAC related newsletter now and um, that will be in there and we're going to kind of crop the video down and put that on YouTube as well so you can watch 
Jessica's explanation, board members' questions, and then there's like a document with it. If you are very interested in it now and not waiting for my um, YouTube skills to happen um, tomorrow or Friday, there is um, the video available on the county website on the board's agenda, and you can click on and watch just that specific chunk of the video as well. Um, and there's a like a I don't know how many pages it is, um, detailed explanation from Jessica about the um, projects as well that goes with the um, presentation. And it is approximately 13 pages long. Um, so you can get- That was from which meeting? This is from the February meeting. It says January, but um, the February 7th meeting. February 7th. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's all of our committee business. Um, the community concerns portion, um, we've got some time here. Uh, were there anything from members of the community that we haven't talked about tonight? Any other topics? Yes. Yes. Do you mind? Oh. Yes. Uh, the uh, Centera Hospital and Crozet Methodist have combined and we're giving monthly uh, uh, family health forms. And we're on our fourth one, and the fourth one is going to be this Tuesday, February the 20th. If it's a bad snow day and schools are closed, it's going to be the following week. And the topic this time is on diabetes and nutrition. We've already had on how not to fall, to be safe in your home, hand pain, and how to um, uh, handle stress. And I've given Sinterra about 20 items of how not to go get old, <laughs> you know. I, 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 and so they're going to try to work through by 20 items. So we have maybe 20 of these for them, and we're trying to have them once a month. And they're free. The price is right from 3 to 4.30, and uh, it's at the Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall. And just come as you are, however, and enjoy the topic or encourage other people. Now, I have some flyers over here that if you would like to take a couple of these flyers, you're welcome to about this forum that um, we're trying to hold it once a month, and Cynthia will present the medical part. The second thing I have to say about is I have mentioned to Ann Mallet, and she's going to give me a name to work on us getting a recycle center here in Crozet. Are y'all, is that okay with you all? Do you want it? Yeah, sounds great. Sounds great, yeah. Well, there was supposedly money available <laughs> for Crozet. I, I'm not letting you forget it, Ann. Uh, 2008, there was $250,000 to create a recycling thing. She needed a site. Yep. But it was basically to expand on what Carol had done right here on the lobby yard. All that stuff. Right. Yeah. And the fact that uh, three or no, four organizations did a big recycle thing with the recycle truck. When recycling was profitable to him. Mm -hmm. That was many years ago. All right, so the other thing I had was um, the robotics team at Western is unbelievable. If you don't have a child in robotics, you may not know about or at Western, but anyway, uh, it would be nice for you all to hear some of the things that the robotics team, and they're winning some pretty prestigious awards. And how, how many of us know that? The other thing is, and this hurts my heart deeply, when I left Western, and retired 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm old. Okay, um, I saw a list in the county how many students are classified as homeless. It was over 100. Now, is that Western students or, or just out? I don't know, but I'm trying to look into it to find out how many students are classified in the county as homeless. Because I worked with the park, I was their treasurer for 38 years, and um, come to find
find out we had a resident student in our bathrooms at the park. Now, how would you like to be a student whose home is in a restroom at the park? That was, we helped them, the park helped them out. But children, they're having a hard time. And I'm going to try to find out more information since it's uh, very close to my heart. Uh, these children that are classified. Now, they are not the same uh, classification. I think the county definition is slightly different. In other words, if they're living with grandparents, but not their parents, they're classified as homeless. Am I right on that, Ann? I, the only explanation I heard years ago was from the school department, and they had their sort of state statute description. And so people would double up to save rent. Um, that, that puts them in one category. So I was, it was over 300 the first year, I remember. And I was so horrified. And, well, it horrified me 20 yeah. years ago yeah. that it was that many. And, I, and now it's, it's uh, I've been told there's some children, they have a mother and a dad, a house, but they don't live there, they live in their car. And I don't know how to help that situation, but it's a community situation. They are our children, they are our next generation. We've got to help them. Yes? Uh, I remember reading several years ago the legislature proposed but did not pass a bill that um, we're trying to initiate called community schools where schools would be funded uh, and staffed to also provide uh, community services, uh, services for people experiencing homelessness, uh, health-related services, vaccinations, things like that. Uh, even though that didn't pass at the state level, that might be a worthwhile initiative that we could look into here. And it just takes some loud bounce like me and some others to get it going, you know? <laughs> Thank you very well, much. Well, you know, and, and I think we need as a community, oh, and one other thing. I want y'all to get your eyes open. Look, 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 look everywhere you can for retail space and let me know. You told me why. Huh? You told me why. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the green olive tree needs more space. Uh, very soon. And we are going to need retail because that's a shop that the community depends on. We don't have any paid employees. We have all volunteers. And you'd be surprised what that shop gives back to the community. Uh, last year's taxes, I think we gave back to the community close to $160. $16,000. How many other retail businesses give the community that much money? Yes. Has the library filled the retail space downstairs here that was occupied by Prose Running? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Prose yeah. Sports is there. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's been filled. And it's smaller than the current technology. Yeah. Yeah. See, what we really want is, you know, space so we can expand, move to expand, and it has some uh, parking. And um, it, it is a shop that uh, it really and truly shows Prose cares for each other. It really does. And um, I haven't finished this year's taxes yet, but um, I kind of think we're over 80000 even with uh, uh, the pandemic and stuff like that. But, you know, how many retail businesses give back free hand? that kind of money to the community. We help put some students through God. I think we have 16 we're helping right now. Thank you very much, Ruby. Thank you. Thank you. 45 years you've been at it. And we've been in business 45 years that it started with a lady and her maid, and she wanted to get rid of the kids' closet stuff. And they, she couldn't get rid of it. She said, well, then let's put up a yard sale. Let's start selling it. And then it, then it went to seven women in a Bible study group. And that's where the green olive tree came from. 
Thank you for this. That's a very helpful information. Uh, are there any other community concerns? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, Joe, thank you for bringing up Montclair earlier. My community concern is also about that. The uh, Board of Supervisors next week is going to be, uh, I'd like to encourage everybody, it's very positive to attend the hearing. Uh, it's on the BOS agenda. Um, this is a very poorly planned community in my opinion. But we need your voice to be heard. There's a petition out there right now that we have over 600 signatures on the way to 1,000. Every day we get about 100 signatures to that, and that petition um, is very clear, and I have a QR code if anybody needs it. You can uh, sign the petition. We, we feel it shouldn't be approved because planned infrastructure is not in place to support Crozet's existing neighborhoods, period. It's, the evidence is out there. I'm glad to see the community is really um, fine. If you read the comments that are in the, the petition, the community really is, the comments are really telling and it really shows that, you know, people really want to push back against uh, the, the overgrowth. You know, we have more housing stock than we could ever need right now and we just need to be a little bit more sensible in our review. Um, and so I thank you for bringing this up and I, I, I'm sure we, you know, I'm sure Ann Malik has an opinion and but I also know that we need at least three members of the board to, um, you know, turn this down. So it's very important, I think, that members of the community show up. And I would hope that um, members of this body uh, could show up and, and voice their concerns and opinions. Nobody's calling for, you know, anything drastic other than to have do the right thing and, and really give take a little time to pause and and safety has been mentioned a number of times this evening and and we really have some severe safety concerns and even at that intersection that very intersection is very poorly rated so thank you very much We're going into Lenten season of 40 days to repent. Why don't we all try to uh, demonstrate an act of kindness to somebody you don't even know? I think that is an excellent idea. Yeah. And I challenge you. <laughs> Three. I agree with that. Second. Second. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>